Hi there, friends, and welcome to the first episode of my new RimWorld of Magic series. I'm Icon, and today we're going to start out the first step on the journey to the Necromancer's School. So what I whipped up here is a theme run, a pretty roleplay heavy run, where we're going to guide the story of Gokora, the ex-healer who's now a necromancer. We're going to build a necromancer's castle here. The rules for this game are quite simple. There's only going to be allowed in here necromancers, necromancers to be, death knights, death knights to be, and undead. Probably some animals which we can use and abuse because also animals can be resurrected there. And as usual, you know me, all the mods used are in the description down there below, so you can check it out. We're also playing in a medieval D&D influenced world, so there are no modern factions in here. We're all just medieval. The storyteller is Maynard Medieval, and in the storyteller settings I've I've set the threat scale to 300% because Rimworld of Magic enables you to be very, very powerful and I thought it's more fun when we actually get to struggle. Now, on top of that I've decided to go with a Naked Brutality start because I just uh, felt like doing so. It's always, in my opinion, cooler than without. And yeah, that's, that's our place where we want to build up our castle. I've set up my camp in, where am I, here, it, here in the mountains, so we're in the middle of a boreal forest, and since we are the bad guys in this game, my imagination was that Kukora was, is an outcast from Town on the Ocean for following his evil ways, and now he's out there to show them all. Gokora himself is a pretty old man already. He's 67 years old, he's frail, he's got a bad back, but due to his age, he also has allocated a couple of skills there. So my long-term goal here is to have a big bad necromancer fortress. I don't know how it's going to look like, like in the long run. Maybe we won't be even staying on that map tile forever because right now I don't know how to build a big castle here, but we're gonna see. So let's join into this wonderful story. I'd be happy if you go with me. Of course, the last thing that I've under, uh, that I've uh, forgotten to mention here is we got a necromancy script because I figured that I wanted to have at least one necromancer's apprentice. And there's another thing. We're also featuring an ideology here. So Rimwall of Magic supports ideologies and therefore we, I started out with a fluid um, ideology, which means we're going to gain points which allow me to reform my ideology. There's one thing that uh, kind of bothered me. I was un incapable of making corpses not ugly to these people, but let's just say looking at corpses that are not being raised is sacrilegious to these people. That does make sense in a way. Okay, guys, so that's our story. The goal of this series is quite simple. As soon as I have a fully running Necromancer's Castle, all with undead minions and such, I feel like the story will be completed. I also want to do some war on, on the enemies around me. There's another rule that I have self-imposed on me, no trade with people unless they come with a trade caravan, but we are not going outside and trading with them. We're maybe Maybe we're buying something from people that come along, but in the long run, we're, we're more of a evil guy faction and we're attacking people and stealing from them. All right, let's get started finally. I can't wait. I hope you guys will enjoy this one. I was extremely looking forward to this uh, run and let's get started. So the best part to start here, I think, would be somewhere where we can get some, some structure running. Because we don't have any clothing, it's pretty cold outside, and we need fire as quick as possible. So, I think I'm just gonna chop some trees here. And, well, gonna build a little shelter here. Gonna start out and do a little bit of a campfire and see how good this will go for me. Food will be an issue though in the longer, in the not only in the long run, also in the short run. So we have to work on that. What's our magic that we got available? I only have 
raise undead available. That's bad. Corpse Explosion. No, the uh, Fog of Torment is my favorite spell. Because it really does work out very, very decently. So... Is there anything we can harvest here which is actually eatable? Doesn't look like it is. Ah, here. There's a couple of berries. Okay, that's going to sustain us at least for a moment, I'd say. In this kind of situation, it's really important that you... micromanage basically every step. The good thing about Kukora is he's pretty good with plants, and he's overall a very uh, talented person. But with his uh, medical conditions here, He's never going to be a fast walker or anything. So we're going, we're working on a clock here. So I'm going to start out with a very, very small shack. Some people would even assume that this is probably uh, still too huge. And I also want to put that book under a, under a roof. So first things first, I'd say we're going to harvest the berries and going to prioritize growing and plant cutting massively. Yeah, so old man Gokora is not really fast, you know. 1.42 cells per second. Jeez, that dude is slow. But I, I did do that on purpose, you know. I wanted to have kind of a difficult start because I really felt like this adds in a lot of uh, a lot of tension and excitement into into the early phase. At least my personal impression. Feel free to tell me what you guys think. Okay, so Gokora is now armed with forty berries. I'm pretty sure this will not last too long, but we're going to go for construction here because I'm pretty sure that hypothermia is a possibility here. And it does seem to me as if we don't get enough wood to... as if we don't have enough wood to get the shelter done. Uh, now we do. Okay. Good stuff. The first day of our evil, sinister necromancer seems to be survivable. All right. It's all going to be a lot easier as soon as I have uh, killed the first people and I can raise some undead. But before you can raise some undead, life of a necromancer ain't easy. Especially if your skills are so limited, like Gogora's skills are. Okay, so we're going to put up a bed and... Where is it? Temperature campfire to make sure that we're not going to freeze outside there really really important i let gokora chill out a bit catch some recreation vibes okay so that little shack now is good enough to host that old man for now Okay, now with that all being done, I think the next thing that I want to do is I want to have a bow. So let's try that because food is absolutely too low here in that kind of situation. So let's see. I can't even create myself a recurve bow. That's actually pretty nifty. Recurve bows are really, really good. And Gokora's shooting skill isn't totally horrible. I mean, it ain't good either, but it might be good enough to take down that rabbit in front of our house. At least I'm counting on you, Gokora. So, agriculture won't be too much of an option here either. Due to the simple fact that there's a very, very short growing period here. Just like in most of these uh, boreal environments, I'm pretty sure we're going to live off of the animals there. Also, 
I enabled a lot of different uh, mods there. So we got alpha animals running. I got the magical menagerie running. I wanted to have a world which is technically sci-fi influenced, but the people here are not really caring about it. It's more of a magical fantasy world which has its uh, sci-fi vibes. So I don't mind about that broken down ancient car here on the corner. I actually uh, enjoy that. Okay, so we've learned Fog of Torment. Wonderful. Fog of Torment is one of my absolute favorite spells there. Because it is uh, a extremely destructive um, AoE. Which can easily kill raiders with uh, little to no problems. Okay. Dear Mr. Pokora, can you shoot that bunny? Let's see. I mean, the other option would be to just simply put a uh, Fog of Torment below that bunny. Pretty sure that... Okay, it ain't killing it. And Bokora downed himself due to arcane weakness there. Poor old man. Just wanted to try out how well that'll work, but... The answer is... Not. Okay. Well then. My dude, where's your bow? Poor old Gokora, he needs food, you know. So. Come on, man. You just need to hit one arrow. Usually that's all it takes to to kill something like a rabbit. Alright, there's... there we go. Now we don't need to do anything further. The uh, rabbit will... will pass out eventually. Alright, we're pretty good on food needs... beyond that. Where did that bunny go? Well, Gokora ain't ha ain't got the necessary food to last longer than tomorrow, but he doesn't need to. All right, that bunny is going to be dead soon. And let's see, can we already get a butchering table online? Yes, we do. All I'd need to get there is a decent amount of uh, wood. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. All right, so we're going to. Oh, we're gonna do that. Well, Kokora got some breakfast for tomorrow, and I'd say we're going to chop down a couple of extra trees to get that butcher table going, and then we're going to eat that bunny after we cooked it, of course, because we're we're actually civilized people here. Okay, so death mark, what does that do? Lose focus, will to fight, reducing attack rate, empowers death bolt. Good thing that we don't have anything called death bolt here. So increases the number of undead that can be created, reduces mana cost, and well okay. I think it was pretty cool to get the... Here. Reduces time between effects. That's what I want to have. So wait a sec. Kokora is incapable of violence and that's the reason why I can't upgrade that skill? Eh... It's an interesting uh, sentiment there. So I actually totally overlooked that my main character is violent, so uh, incapable of violence, so excuse me for a moment. I need to fix something behind the scenes. Now, where were we? Um, so Gokora, of course, never has been incapable of violence after all these preparations that this slipped my attention. I'm sorry, guys. So I figured that a royal bastard childhood and the adulthood of a drifter would be very fitting to this person. And now I got that. Well, I didn't pay attention on that end. Please forgive me for that uh, lapse off. 
attention. Okay, so we got that figured out, and now we're going to pick up that dead bunny and turn him into food. Which is the best thing that we can do for now. And also, it's going to enable me to cook some simple meals, which is going to be wonderful. At least we're going to have some food so uh, source now. I mean, it ain't much, but... Wait a sec, Where, where's that meat? Did you already eat that? Looks like you did. Well, we're going to need more food than that, that's for sure. But where do we get that? I mean, attacking a caribou sounds pretty dangerous to me. They... They do have a revenge chance, so I'd rather not. So, dear Gokora, you have to go for yet another small piece of game. And that's the rat over here. It's really a pain that this dude is so slow, but it's not like I didn't want it differently. Alright, here we go. Every single scrap of meat is hard-earned, but that's okay for me. We got visitors. Well, well. What can we do to these visitors? Alright, we got a little bit of food here, and let's see. Fogli and Hermina. They would only sell stuff to me, but, oh uh, well. The medieval mods that I've installed didn't do their job too well, but I've or always had problems with a full conversion into medieval stuff, so I'll just pretend as if these things don't exist in my run, you know. It's the easiest way to do, in my opinion. Alright, so I'm, I'm a wee bit tempted to uh, put a uh, Fog of Torment under, under their... Uh, under their butt and see what it'll do to them but I'll rather I'll rather not I think this could be quite deadly but speaking about deadly let's see what happens to that bear if I put a fog of torment below him so one of the biggest problems is that he's always passing out when he's doing that but actually, them dudes here, they did exactly what I wanted them to do. So, mission was a complete success now. All we need to do is, is wait until Hermine is dead. And then we're going to have a nice assortment of minions already. So, we're, we're going to butcher up the, uh, the bear there. But also, this uh, showed me that this was a very, very risky move there. Light leather elephant tusk, okay. So, like I said, I'm going to ignore everything which is not fitting into my background here. So, package survival meals and such. Just, uh, just pre pretend as if they weren't existing is my go-to strategy here. Okay, so with that amount of meat, I don't want to go for simple single uh, jobs anymore we're gonna go for the big jobs but more importantly there's a different thing which we need to do and that's getting good old Kokora over there there's a mad squirrel okay been about time that I did what I did. Arise, my minion. There we go. Okora downed himself one more time, but that doesn't matter. We now have an undead minion doing our bidding, so that's a good start. Oh, that's new. They are actually starting out as enslaved people now. Before the uh, upgrades there, or before the ideology thing there work differently so need slave beds do I 
And what did kill that uh, squirrel? Ah, the visitors did. I see. Alright, awesome. So, now I got a zombie minion. Would you like to have, you know? Come on, get over there, Hermina. You need to rescue your master. Slave unattended. I hope that is not really a thing, but Gukora is really uh, down for a long, long time here. My God. Didn't expect that. But well, old man, old man necromancer with a bad back and all. Not too surprised about that. The good news here is that my zombie will never ever need rest. She's never ever gonna need anything from us. Except orders. I love it. So now we got the worst part already done. Good stuff. Alright, nice. I'm happy. It was a little bit risky though, um, not gonna lie, because if those <laughs> if those people wouldn't have been on the map, Gokora would have been just getting eaten by that uh, by that grizzly, and that's that. So undead are pretty uh, pretty cool, but they're also suffering from. I think they are working way slower than human beings. If I remember correctly, that was the major downside of them, but that's okay. We'll have to start our Undead Empire somehow in some way. And I'm really, really happy about my zombie minion here doing my bidding. So we got a crafting spot online, and I'd say it should be also about time to make some clothing here, but sadly we ain't there yet. Hmm. Yeah, well. Let's start out with a new shirt, with a new, with a, with another Reaper bow. So Kokora and Hermina get the uh, necessary weapons down. I mean, as a necromancer, you can also, you can also uh, raise animals as undead minions. Also no problem. But yeah. People are just the best uh, source there. So my faction is the Grand School of Necromancy. And this place is called... Completely stereotypical... Blackstone Fortress. The idea was because we got Basalt, you know. Alright. So, Gokora is gaining skill points here. And, yeah. So, Fog of Torment is among my favorite spells, because as soon as you have at least one undead minion, you can just send him up front tanking, and the Fog of Torment doesn't hurt undead. Great. Just the perfect skill there, to make sure that your undead minions are getting the job done. It hurts me a little bit to let all these things rot outside there. Probably we're going to... Yeah, well, I'm going to make an exception for medicine. Let's just pretend that medicine is... Uh, isn't too modern here, okay? Please forgive me, guys. And feel free to give me a good idea about mods that really solve these problems. I've tried out so many mods and none of them actually did really work. So, the elephant tusk has been fashioned into a long knife, so... Why is the elephant tusk then made out of leather? Whatever. Hermina is a strong melee combatant, so she's going to get that one. If I remember correctly, Undeadness has some... Yeah, move speed minus two. Exactly. And global work speed minus 50%. That's one thing that is really worth mentioning and... Pretty rough downside, but whatever. We gonna manage nevertheless. So, the good news though is you can just uh, send your undead minions over there and knife some, some squirrel and stuff. And we're also going to make good use of her blocking power when there's going to be the next raider attack. Pretty sure. Okay, so I want to have more clothing. 
or no, I want to have clothing. I should put it rather like that. So there's another dead squirrel, Hermina, would you kindly? It does amuse me quite uh, greatly that my first undead minion has such a strong uh, resemblance or connection to a different fantasy setting with mage schools as well. I'm not gonna say it out loud, okay? But you all, but I guess you all know what I'm talking about. So we need more light leather. Go stabby stabby. Go give me, give me some raccoon minion. There we go. It's working out really good though. All right, a couple of light leather units later, I think we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, wealthy enough to, to create that tribal. Uh, where? 60? Oh yeah, we can already do that. Alright, Kukora. The White Ape Katon is attacking us. Alright. I thought I enabled more D&D races when our army all. But okay. Now that's where we want it to be. Well... Ah, you know what? We're going to wait until they attack. I don't want to uh, get into the water here. It's quite annoying to do so. Alright, we got tribal wear. My dude, tribal wear. Okay, they're now beginning their assault. So, Gokora, you are going to equip that recurful, please. Alright. So did I install the bridge mod? So I can't remember anymore if I had more bridges installed or not, but we can actually find out. No, but I might be... Uh... Oh yeah, I do. Here. Simply more bridges. So, hmm. maybe we can do a real castle here after all, with just the power of bridges. Hmm. I like the idea of that. Okay, so Gopora is pretty far away, and Lakoba is actually a sharpshooter. Good thing that the sharpshooter ain't got a weapon at all. Ah. That's quite ridiculous. Okay. There it goes. Gokora downed himself one more time, but... Uh, That didn't work out as well as I intended it to. But we're going to be fine, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that my zombie is going to be capable of taking down an unarmed person. Yep. She is. Alright, Kokora is no longer incapable of walking. So, well, I'm not interested in that person's... well-being? I'll rather, I'll rather make the Koba one of my own. So, okay. It's one of the weird deaths again. So, what the heck? Ah, yeah, it was, uh, one of those strange attacks, the, uh, it's a RimWorld of Magic thing. Basically, that dude somehow activated in his last dying moment a spell which was bound to go towards Kokora. And there was no escaping possible or anything like that. But since it's not a deadly spell, we're, we're just fine. RimWorld of Magic things. Nothing, nothing special. Sometimes you just get hit by an explosion inside your room. That's just how it works, you know. Poor old Gokora. Can't stand up right now. And his undead minion has no jobs. But I want to have the second undead minion, too. Yeah, it's too bad. He can't be patched up right now. If he could be, then he would be uh, standing out way faster. Yeah. Okay. So, her mina needs rescue. 
Her thumb is bleeding? Are you kidding me? Oh gosh. I hope Okora will be standing up before he dies. So, yeah. Extremely buggy things, you know. Yay! We got a, we got a safe time squirrel. So, my man, please don't die from a uh, buggy explosion there. But it looks like he does. Okay, I'm not accepting dying from a interaction like that. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Please, please forgive me for that. I am normally really not that kind of person, but seriously, this is BS. This is just BS. This is an interaction which I don't understand why it keeps happening as well, because it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, seriously. It shouldn't have happened in the first place, so I'm not accepting that I'm going to die from that. So, uh, scratch, scar, scar, here, arcane leg, here. That's, that, that goes too far. <laughs> not in the first moment here, so. Also, my, my zombie bleeding to death by an blast of thump. You know, not like... Let's not be uh, too, too mean about that. I hope you guys understand. RimWorld of Magic has a history of doing weird things to your game. That's not the first time that we see this. <laughs> Poor old Gabora. <laughs> but yeah. Promise in the upcoming uh, episodes we will have these occurrences more and more uh, less. But for now, well, I think it was a good fun run. Let's just pretend that this didn't happen. I never understood why Rimworld of Magic actually does that. This is a weird interaction where spellcasters sometimes can activate one one last dying thing and it does go off no matter where the victim is at. Doesn't uh, interact with line of sight, that's why he got hit by that while he was <laughs> lying in the bed. Anywho, that was just the beginning of, I, of a very uh, fun series, I hope. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Drop your comments down below. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed. And check out my channel. I do daily content like this, so you might want to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you are interested in more. Also down there in the description box, you'll find my Twitch channel where I do almost daily streams, my Discord community where you can find a large amount of like-minded gamers, and last but not least, if you are interested in truly supporting this, this project even more, there are links and ways and means to do so down there. Check them out if you wanna. Don't mind if you don't. I'm really, really grateful you keep watching these, and let's just hope we're gonna be a little less buggy in the next episode. See you guys there. Bye-bye!